Hi, how are you guys? Good, thank you. Good, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Good. Um, so I have my first question is kind of a question for like the overall show. And then after that, we'll kind of move into some season two specific stuff, if that's okay with you guys. Sure. Yeah, perfect. Um, so it's like well known that the creation of readers was inspired by Martin Freeman's own parenting experiences. I was wondering if you guys have kind of drawn inspiration from anything else in creating like the characters and the tone of the show. Yeah, I mean, we 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 spent quite a long time didn't we, Simon, uh, to the beginning of the process of putting the show together was basically Simon and Martin and I having a series of very long lunches um, that were sort of more akin to like a support group than um, than, than ideas such as where we talked about our own kind of guilt and fears and our parenting experience and so on. Um, and we that was the sort of that was the opening set of of inspirations. And then really once we got into the sort of making the show proper, we opened the writers' room and our fabulous team of writers all brought their own insecurities and guilt and fear. Um, and we put them in a big pile and pulled some things out of the pile. I think that's yeah. Maybe, uh, is it yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of just kind of anecdotal talking about being yeah. parents. I mean the the, the pilot, which was uh, more or less the, the first episode of the first season, um, that just came out of the idea of, of the universal parenting thing of trying to get a night's sleep. And we thought we could do that while flashing away to show all the, the other characters and a bit of Paul and Ale's past and before kids. And um, that seemed like a good way of doing it. And, and we wanted it to be a sort of fragmented style because you are very fragmented as a parent. Your lives are just kind of in pieces a lot of the time. So it made sense for that style uh, of, of, of shooting it to, to, to be the one we used. Yeah, makes total sense. What was like your your inspiration to make it uh, more of a dark comedy, like taking that sardonic like British humor? It's not Modern I mean, Family, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was always it was always going to be a comedy, but with I mean, but just a comedy is is how Martin would like it. You know, said he would like <laughs> it to be, which is um, which is there's a lot of I mean, fundamentally, it, it's got to feel real. And that's been our watchword all the way through is that it's you've got to be able to lift all of the jokes out. And it should still work as a drama and you should still be drawn into the story as a drama. And um, but it is a, it is a comedy. It's a it's a sitcom, I guess you would say sitcom rather than comedy drama, which is kind of I don't know, it seems a mealy mouth way of describing something I'd yeah. call it a sitcom. And um, a narrative, a narrative is what we're doing. Uh, but it's um. But but re but real. It's got to feel real, and so that was always you know never we never sacrificed the reality uh, in in favour of a joke. You know, no, if, 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 like we'd never seen we'd never seen the the reality of parenting in 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 comedy. Um, the the, mm -hmm. the sort of the you know the, that dichotomy between the fact that you love your children more than you thought it was possible to love anything. It's a revelation when you have children, the amount of love that you have, but it's also a revelation, the amount of fury and frustration that you're able to feel with something. And that that's the same, the, the, what's, um, what's giving you both of those feelings is precisely the same thing, your, your own children. We'd never sort of seen that. And mm -hmm. kids in sitcoms are, tend to be a bit kind of cartoony um, and more broadly drawn, and we wanted to make the the experience of parenting, um, to, you know, a, a comic version of the, the, of the experience of parenting that was, as Simon says, completely truthful. I mean, mm. it's, it's it's a relationship comedy, really, um, yeah. but it's a relationship between parents and children. So it's it's trying to do a, something as honest as a relationship comedy, but between uh, parents and their children. That was that's what we set out to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's great. You guys definitely have accomplished that as well. Um, so that kind of guides me to my new question about the new season. Um, mm. So season two really tackles these taboo topics from like the beginning, like it addresses mental health and aging and death. Um, is there anything that kind of pushed you guys to address these topics? And is there anything specific you would like to add to the, the conversation that's already surrounding? I think because we're aging and getting closer to death, it's affecting our mental health. And those seem to be the three things that are most yeah. to us. Um, it's, yeah, it's the, they're primal things, I think. And they, those things that, you know, 
always have a lot of dramatic and comedic uh, juice to them. And so that we're drawn to those because you can, you can make a really interesting show from them. And, and we don't want to shy away from it either. You know, if where Paul and Ali are in terms of, of when they had kids is that they've got aging parents as well. And you tend to, you know, you're parenting up as well as parenting down. And, and when, you know, if you'd had kids younger, say you, the, grandparents would have been a resource now they're another you know another thing to worry about so we just we we don't want to we never want to just shock we never kind of go out we just want to explore those primal things that um that are universal we want to kind of tap into what everyone has experienced if they're a parent or if they're a child and remember being a child we've thought we you know we don't sit in the room and go right what's a really good a juicy subject we sort of you know we we take from our own experiences we talk as we were saying earlier on we we talk quite honestly um amongst ourselves about what our fears and hopes are and our experiences are and everything in the show comes really from we're not making anything up you know, you you it, it's all they're they're heightened versions and obviously mm. they're you know they're turned into stories but um but all of the subjects at hand are things that are definitely of concern to the people who who make the show. Yeah. 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 No, that's great, uh, and you can feel that natural flow when you're watching it as well. It's fantastic. Um, yeah. So I guess that kind of brings me to my next question, which is about the the massive time jump that we experienced mm. between season one and season two. Um, so since you mentioned that you guys kind of venture into these topics more more naturally, like in conversation, did you already know you wanted to take that time jump? Or was it like, oh, we want to talk about this. We They have to be older, you know? I think we'd always planned it, hadn't we, Chris? I think we yeah. always thought we would make that leap because it would keep us on our toes. It would mean we wouldn't repeat ourselves. It would make it difficult for us because it's you're, it's a whole new dynamic with the parents and the kids in this second season and so we were in a way writing a, a new sitcom again um and we like the idea of that because it just keeps everybody on their toes and it's uh and it's and it's tough to do it so it's and, and the and the tough stuff usually turns out to be the good stuff at the end of it so it was just it was it was that and and yes and we can tell different stories with the kids of, of that age and we can you know what you were talking about just now or even about you know those about the topics like mental health we have a there's a generation of kids now who are comfortable with the language of mental health. And I think that might, that's sort of relatively new to have, you know, to, to, for kids of 13 now can talk about how they're feeling in, 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 in the language of mental health without just having to say I'm shy or I'm nervous. They can, you know, they have a vocabulary and that's interesting to us. And, you know, as parents, I'm a parent of kind of two grown up sons and, you know, we've, 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 uh, thankfully been able to talk about that stuff you know uh, openly and and in an honest way and we so we wanted to reflect that in the in the show it was a big challenge the biggest challenge i think well you tell me what you think Simon. but i think probably the biggest challenge in putting this season together was that right at the beginning we had to establish new dynamics mm. you know the, the the way that a sitcom works is you know how character a relates to character g over here and you know what the interplay is between everybody but actually once you move your kids on five years and they're sort of they're not, they are the same people but they're fundamentally different and mm. your relationship with them is different um and we wanted to, <laughs> although we wanted to represent that idea that as you as you as your children grow your parenting has to change um we of course <laughs> the price of that is that we had to <laughs> figure out what the relationship was between Paul and Ali and Luke yeah. and Andrew, and in fact their grandparents as well. It's a big difference. Yeah, yeah and whether we planned it. And whether Paul's parenting style can kind of translate <laughs> Survive, his yeah. parenting style to a you know to a seven year old, can it translate to parenting a thirteen year old? And the answer to that is no it can't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I guess kind of talking about these new, I guess, you know, child characters, they, they've grown into these new people. The new actors for them are absolutely incredible. I was wondering what the, the casting process was like and the chemistry reads. Well, it was, um, it was 
it was great actually we have such good uh we have such good casting um uh directors and and uh yeah it would we did a lot of chemistry reads lots of combinations of kids mm. um uh it, it was also quite hard for us because because of the structure of our show where as simon says it's fragmented so we we do a lot of flashbacks as you know and that meant that we were able to flashback to uh to george and jada who played um who played luke and ava in in the last season but it also meant that we would we potentially were going to have scenes where we would be visiting you know those characters sort of four years apart as it were and and we would have young Luke and older Luke on screen, you know, next week. So they had to look pretty convincing mm. as well. That was a yeah. that was a trick. Um, but yeah, it was it was a it was uh, it was an interesting process. One of the things that um, really struck me was how many super talented kids mm. there are um, working. You know, it wasn't yeah. they're brilliant those two, Alex and Eve. I mean, they're really brilliant. They were the right choice, but though there was an you know, there was an embarrassment of riches there. Yeah. But yeah, they're, they're fantastic and you can give them so much kind of, you know, complicated stuff to do. And they, and they, you know, they don't feel, you never feel like they're kind of sitcom kids. You never feel like they're TV kids. Even You just feel like you're watching a family yeah. and you feel like they're, you know, they're, they are as real as, uh, as the adult actors, I think, they're which so is completely you know, natural, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I think one, one of my favourite episodes in this season is episode four, which is where we we see um, Ava and Paul's relationship comes much more to the to the fore because we've seen a lot of Luke, of course, um, particularly because in the, in the uh, earlier series, Jada was only five when we were filming that. Um, so there's a limit of, uh, to what you could actually, what you were allowed to do, you know, just in terms of the time mm. we were allowed to have her on set and all of those kinds of things. Um, but seeing the seeing the father daughter thing for the first time is a that's a big thing I think and she's so up to that task she's a, she's terrific mm. yeah oh that episode warmed my heart so yeah. much I have like tears <laughs> thinking about it that was so sweet um, so I know we're kind of running a little running out of time um, so I guess for my like final question would be, and it's kind of a silly one because I know season two hasn't even aired yet, but has there already been talk for a season three? Can you guys give us any season three information? <laughs> you, you have to have ideas for season three, just in case you are fortunate enough for the, for the good people at, um, at our US and UK broadcasters to give us a season three. So we've, we've, we've talked about it. And we've talked about, you know, trying to make it as ambitious as, as we hope seasons one and two are. Um, so we've, uh, yeah, discussions all are be being had. Yes. <laughs> all in song. <laughs> you've got to be, as Simon says, you know, you've got to be ready to go. Because obviously if you, if you want to make a show to go at the same time next year, you have to write that and film that and edit it and, you know, polish it and do all the things you need to do. So, so you've got, you have to be ready to go if, if the call comes. So it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Big relief. No, we'll, we'll all keep our fingers crossed for sure thank you, thank you. Thank yeah you. it's a super great like universal enjoyable show um That's you guys great. have thank done you. an incredible job oh thank you that's very kind, very kind. thank yeah, you thank you thank you guys so much this oh, was so much you. fun thank you very much right. take care nice to see you, you. Bye, bye bye bye, bye. bye.